Uh, hoi hoi folks, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean, aka Uncle Frogface, and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're not new, then welcome back. So I am super excited today because we are doing something a little bit different. Uh, so recently, as I was browsing through YouTube, um, I saw a video from the YouTuber Miss Craft, which is Trent over on his channel. Um, previously, Trent had got together uh, a few friends and they'd each drawn out a load of uh, body parts on cards, so from different creatures and animals. And then they drew a random selection of cards and uh, they created their own monsters as pictures or sculptures. Um, and Trent has gone and done it again, this time with more people and with more cards. So there's now, I think it's more than 300 cards now in the collection for the Monster Bash. So I sent Trent a message and just said, look, I love these cards. Would you mind if I just, you know, make my own video creating something creepy, you know? I, I'm a horror author, I do love everything creepy, uh, so I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. And he said, no, of course, that's absolutely fine. So, that is what we're doing today. Trent very kindly has put together a uh, video with all of the cards kind of scrolling through them. So what I'm gonna do on my iPad is I'm going to play through, and I'm going to randomly take some screenshots and take seven screenshots, and whatever seven parts we end up with, those are going to be our building blocks for our creature. So, here we go, we're gonna get started. Okay. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we'll stop the video. Uh, okay, time to see what we have. Uh, Oh, okay. So starting off strong. This is, I think, a spine, spinal cord, um, or some kind of exoskeleton. Uh, okay, number one. Number two, mask. Masks are, are pretty creepy. I'm sure I could do something with that. Number three, is that eyes? Sunken eyes? Yeah, I think that's, that's sunken eyes. Four, uh, a tail. Okay, interesting. Five, a crown. <laughs> Okay, so royal monster, whatever this is. Maybe it's just eating some royalty. Oh, that's a really creepy hand. I like that. Long fingers. And finally, this. I don't know what this is, but I'm sure we will make it work somehow. Okay. I think I should sketch out some ideas. Let's do that. This is such rough sketching. Um, I really didn't spend any time on this. I've probably had like three minutes between um, choosing my cards and actually sketching something out. So I thought, let's look at the mask. Should I make that the focal point? Where am I going to attach the tail? Do I put the eyes on the mask? I wasn't really feeling it, but I suddenly had this idea. And I think sometimes it's really good to just kind of go with a, a gut instinct. But because I didn't have any arms or legs, I just had hands, why not go for a kind of serpentine creature? And instead of having the face that is natural mask, have it holding a mask with these creepy long fingers. And that was my starting point. And, and I got out my sculpting box and set to work. So straight away, piece of wire, and I'm gonna use this as my armature. And it's a nice simple one. Don't have any arms or legs. So I can just measure out the rough kind of dimensions that I want. And once I've got that, I just uh, wrap that in some uh, aluminium foil or aluminium foil if you're in the States. Just to create my kind of starting base sculpture. And I had no kind of direction really of where I was going to go with this other than just see what works. So I've got some Super Sculpey Ultralight. I thought I'd make a really simple uh, kind of hard armature by covering what I have here in some of this really soft marshmallowy clay and baking it and then I have a nice firm but light kind of base to sculpt on top of. Um, and it actually worked out really well. I was quite surprised. Once I'd got everything covered, 
Um, you can see this is the, kind of the tail part, which is really the, the whole body. I was able to just bend in the, to the position that I wanted the whole sculpture to be in. Um, giving it as much of a kind of twist to the body as I can. And once it's baked, it's nice and hard, and I can start sculpting my first pieces. So, I've just taken a bit of liquid Sculpey, and this blob of Super Sculpey Original, which is uh, the kind of a nice soft uh, clay, and I'm blobbing out the kind of main head area, and here I'm doing the eye part. So we've got these nice sunken eyes, so I'm using a ball stylus to mark in where I want the actual socket to be and then drawing out underneath to give it that, that kind of baggy, horrible, sunken eye feel. And with a couple of balls of clay put into the holes there, we can smooth it out and we instantly have our eyeballs. And once we've kind of got those where we want, tiny little thin snakes of clay cut to little, little lengths and we can put in some eyelids. And again, this is really simple, you know, there's, there's nothing too hard here. We're just placing those pieces and then smoothing them in to give us a, a nice kind of droopy, saggy eye look. Lovely. So once I'm happy with the eye, I want to build up the brow ridge. So a big brow ridge gives a lot of depth to the eyes underneath, makes them look even more sunken. Um, so I'm just slowly building up on, I was going to add a bit of texture to the nose, I think most of this ended up being lost later, but you know, it's always good to experiment and see what's going to work and what's not. Um, but if nothing, it just added a little bit more volume and dimension to the face, so I was happy with that. And then finally with the face, I just wanted to have these these cheeks, just to kind of, again, give a bit more shape and dimension. So. As I was sculpting out the, the eye part, I was trying to think of what I wanted this creature to be. And it started to kind of look and feel like some kind of uh, temple guardian, like a you know a Cerberus type creature um, or a Hydra. So because of the, the other card that we picked out that kind of had an aztec -y pattern to it, um, that's kind of what I had in mind was this kind of Aztec temple guardian um, and this here reminded me a little bit of like the the uh, hood of a cobra um, which I know sounds more kind of um, Egyptian um, but once I kind of had that in it really informed what I wanted to do with the rest of the sculpture so I just wanted to cover up this bit of wire at the end of the tail just get that nice and smoothed in you can see I bent that outwards to give a bit more dimension and then I knew I needed to have an armature for the mask piece as well so again with the Super Sculpey Ultralight uh, and a bit of bent foil I'm just getting a really basic shape that I'll be able to sculpt on later and just punching through some eye holes and then this can all go to bake and now that that has all baked and cooled down I can sculpt on top of this, this base mask to create something a little bit nicer. And this is a Super Sculpey Medium, uh, which is a bit firmer than the original. Uh, and I really like this because I can go at it with a knife and I can kind of um, sculpt it uh, by taking stuff away and getting nice clean edges, which I think works really well for kind of... Um, decorative things uh, and uh, particularly with masks and things that would have been carved in in real life um I, I love this tip i think i got this from ace of clay of putting in the chin and the bottom lip first and you just need a little snake of clay on the top and you instantly have a nice mouth so once i've really got all of the bits that i wanted onto the face i'm going in and here you can see this gives it that that nice carved texture by literally carving it out so now I wanted to add the spine section and I'm just taking small pieces and I'm pinching out the edges to give it the kind of the edge of the vertebrae and I'm sticking this down again with a bit of liquid Sculpey uh, and as they go down they get smaller and smaller until they're just little dots on the ridge of the, uh, on the, of the back. And then adding a little bit more texture with some extra tools. 
And now we're on to the crown part. So as I said, I wanted this to be kind of an aztec temple guardian. So I'm combining the crown and the Aztec design elements from that other piece. I don't know whether that's what it's supposed to be, but it's what it, it reminded me of. And I'm just carving out this kind of geometric pattern that I can use as, as a crown for this creature. Um, and I'm going to carve out that middle section and then just add some a few extra details. And just these small little details that we picked up later in the painting and, and just add a little bit of extra dimension. And once I'm happy with that, we're just going to glue it to the top of the head. So now for the hand. So the thing that I'm taking away from the hand are those long fingers. Um, and they kind of reminded me a little bit of um, Geiger's designs for the face hugger from Alien. Um, so here I'm just sculpting out little fingers. So I'm not doing the whole hand, I'm just doing fingers. And I do separate them into three sections, but actually once they were baked, they were a bit too long. So I just snapped them and used uh, the, the top two sections of the, each of the fingers. But these were super easy to do. And once they were baked, I was able to glue them in position. And I'm going to save you about 30 minutes here because this was an absolute nightmare getting it all done but once it was all glued in place and all set this is what we end up with and you can see that it's kind of hiding its real face behind this mask face you can kind of imagine it hiding in the shadows so now i want to blend everything in with some milliput uh, so this is a two-part epoxy putty and i mixed way too much i always do this i always mix too much um but I never let any of it go to waste. So whatever I don't use, I put some texture onto it and then I can use that later for texturing other sculpts because it goes nice and rock hard in about four hours. So I'm blending in all of the fingers to make sure they look like they're actually coming out of the body and not just stuck on. And I'm doing that both on the outside and the inside as well to give that kind of fleshiness where the connections are. And the good thing with milliput is you can smooth it out with just a little bit of water. So a silicon tool and a little bit of water means you can get a really nice smooth finish. And once those are all kind of in situ and, and nicely blended in, I've still got this left over. So I thought, let's add some more detail. So first I wanted to fix this part here just to smooth it out and make it even on both sides. Then I thought I would add some belly scales. So I'd give it that more kind of serpentine feel. Then I decided to add some more of these spinal ridges all the way down the tail. Then I added a little bit of extra to the brow ridge and a little bit of decoration on the mask. Fingernails on each finger, just some little tiny fingernails. Again, just give a little bit of extra dimension. <laughs> a little bit more detail on the crown as well. Just a, a few blobbies on top. And some extra detail to the tail, just, just building up the end of that tail to add some interest. And building up the spine a bit more as well, making that a little bit more ridge-like. And about four hours later, once all of that had dried, this is what we are left with. So it looks like a hot mess. All of these different colored clays all kind of smashed together. But this is the fun part. This is where we get to unify all of these bits that we've done and bring it into one cohesive thing. And I'm just doing a base layer of gray acrylic paint here. This is a mid gray, so it's mostly white with a little bit of black because black overpowers white very quickly. And I'm just gonna coat the whole thing all over and get a nice even coat. And once that's dry, I did hit it with a hairdryer to speed up the drying process. You can see it's more cohesive of a, as a singular sculpture now. And for the, the kind of main skin tone, I've gone for this magenta -y colour, which I've doled down with some of that grey, because otherwise it was a bit too vibrant, a bit too saturated. So I've added some grey to dull that down. And I'm just kind of... Um, dry brushing, not even brushing, just kind of uh, dabbing the surface to give a mottled texture. Um, I want to give it a kind of nice fleshy texture and, and that mottling works really well. 
And once I'd gone over with that, I added a little bit of white to that in a separate pan just to bring out some highlights in some areas. And then I did the same again with some black to bring out some shadow areas just to give a little bit of depth to the sculpture and added that in the areas that would receive less light. And then to contrast the magenta, I'm using this sap green, which again, I've dulled down with a bit of gray and all of those kind of connection areas where the flesh would meet another piece of flesh. Think of about like the top and the palm of your hand, how they're different colors. Uh, I wanted to use this green color and then less kind of washed out. I'm using it to paint our fingernails. And then we've got this area behind the mask. So we didn't have any mouth or anything. So I need to kind of just add a bit of uh, depth and a bit of mystery of oh, what actually is behind there. Uh, what is that mask covering up? So I've just gone in with a bit of uh, black wash and let that dry in there just to um, kind of further the shadows there. So we've got our small detail brush to come in with the eyes. We had no real details in the eyes, so I'm just leaving these as black staring eyes. And then on the back, a bit of yellow ochre and some gray gives us this nice um, bony color that we can come in, have a look like some of these bones are protruding through the skin. And once we've got all of those in, coming in with a bit of a lighter color to give it uh, some of the details. Now, we've got these parts which I'm going to color with this. It's the Stuart Semples Culture Hustle Goldest gold acrylic paint. I got this to use for a different project but needs must. I'm going to use it here and boy was I impressed. This paint goes on super smooth. I did only do one coat and it probably could have done with two coats but just with that one coat it is so shiny, so smooth to use. I was super super impressed and I'm actually confident now with the project that I originally got it for that I'm gonna get really, really good results. So big thumbs up for Stuart and the Culture Hustle team. So now I've got those parts in. The last bit was kind of the ferny, frondy parts that were in that aztec -y pattern bit. So I've just got some wool here, which is your kind of pound store acrylic yarn and um, in black and again, this kind of sap green color and I've just cut it into little strands. And I'm gonna glue it all down and then come in when it's all dry and trim it to a much better length. We are about done. Oh my goodness, how much fun was that? And look, at the end of it, I have another creepy monster to add to my sculpture shelf. Um, I had so much fun doing this. If you uh, enjoy making creatures, either painting, drawing, or sculpting, do go and check out Trent's video and all of the other creators. I will link them down below. So that's for the Monster Bash 2 and Monster Bash 1. Um, Stand out for this is the Stuart Semple Culture Hustle Gold Paint. I'm so in love with that. I just added an extra pop to this that I wasn't expecting. Um, I still don't know what to call this guy. If you have any suggestions for a name, leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. Um, but as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, goodbye.